Ah, Venice, one of the most extraordinarily beautiful cities in the world. It's the city of water, but this isn't boat advice. Venice is the most vulnerable city when it comes to global warming. The water levels are rising, but the car I'm about to drive just might be its salvation. This is the Hyundai iX35 fuel cell electric vehicle, or FCEV. But unlike battery powered cars, this one runs on hydrogen, making its own electricity on the go. The only emission, good old H2O. Yep, just water. We've come to Europe to drive this car from Venice to Frankfurt, the equivalent of Sydney to Melbourne. And we're not just going to cruise up the autostrada, we're going over the Alps to see if this is the real deal. So it looks like an iX35, feels like an iX35, so is this the car of the future? Let's find out. As we exit the Venice car park, the first futuristic thing I notice is that the car is virtually silent. And as I check the gauges on the dash, the tank is full and I've got a range of over 500 k's. That's a tank full of hydrogen. Hydrogen being the most abundant element in the universe. Not just on Earth, but in the entire universe. It will simply never run out and is completely renewable. The next not so futuristic thing I notice is that this feels just like a normal SUV. But it does have those electric vehicle traits which is good throttle response and plenty of torque. Well, all the torque right from the get-go. As I sit in this amazing feat of technology, making my way through historic Italian villages, I ponder how the Romans must have traveled these mountains. It would be several thousand years before the first internal combustion engine was born. It would take another century before Hyundai would embark on this futuristic project in 1998. And just 17 short years later, I'm driving the fourth generation of the FCEV, and Hyundai tell me they are completely committed to making clean green hydrogen power a reality. As we cut through the mountains via this remarkable tunnel system, we begin our massive climb up into the Alps. This is really going to put the fuel cell power to the test. The car is slightly heavier than a diesel iX35. It produces 100 kilowatts of power and 300 newton meters of torque. So on these mountain roads, it's certainly no sports car, although the instant torque from the electric motor makes it feel quite responsive. The handling and general dynamics are average, but that's not the point. This test drive is about experiencing the technology. We're here at the top of the Alps at 2300 metres. That's higher than any other mountain in Australia and the iX35 is doing it easy. And there's no range anxiety because this is a hydrogen powered vehicle. No loss of power either due to altitude. So yes, whilst it's electric and does have some batteries that will power the car for a few k's if you run out of gas, they'll also give you an extra shove in the back when you put your foot down. So as we descend the mountain, I'm using the regenerative braking system to recharge the car's batteries. Speaking of recharging, the sun is setting and it's time to recharge my batteries. We're about halfway through our trip, having driven about 500 kilometres. And what's most striking about this car is just how normal it is. It's just like driving any other SUV. But what's not normal is this. Instead of an internal combustion engine, there's a fuel cell, which is essentially its own power station. Similar to a normal engine, which combines oxygen and petrol to produce its power, this unit mixes hydrogen and oxygen and, through the magic of science, produces electricity, which powers the car. The only byproduct is water, as the hydrogen atom is made up of two hydrogen molecules 
H2 and combine that with the oxygen atom O and you get H2O. We're on the German Autobahn now and we've wound it up to about 160 k's an hour and the only emission, water. I mean, it really is amazing that we're doing this kind of speed and we're not burning one ounce of petrol or emitting a single toxin. I mean, that's quite staggering. And we're doing that now, here and now in Germany. And whilst we're tearing up the k's on the German Autobahns on our way to the next refuel in Munich, I start thinking about the reliability and safety of this car. The facts are that Hyundai have done over 4 million k's of testing from 50 degree plus temps in Death Valley in the States to sub-zero in Sweden and everywhere in between. They've also done countless crash tests and satisfied the toughest of regulatory bodies in California. We've arrived in Munich and this is a standard petrol station and that is a standard Bowser. Well, not quite. This one is pumping hydrogen gas into the iX35. 5.64 kilos of the stuff and all it takes is a few minutes. To recharge a battery powered EV can take hours. Now there are 80 of these type of hydrogen refueling stations across Europe with a similar amount in the USA and Japan. Australia has just one and it's privately owned. Australia should be leading this kind of ultra green technology. Instead, we're falling behind. Australian governments, both state and federal, should be doing a lot more towards the future of transportation because in Europe, that's here now. With almost a thousand Ks completed, this journey is drawing to a close. And I'm now convinced that this technology could not only save Venice, but it could save the entire planet. This trip has proven two things. First, with government incentive, hydrogen power is a reality. But more than that, as a complete petrol head and lover of cars, I'm no longer concerned about the world running out of fossil fuels because the car of the future is already here and it's emissions free.